this is the Imperial Prince. He's the sole surviving descendant of an ancient clan that once dwelled in this land, but now he's alone with no one except for a lone, loyal shinobi. The two of them have each other and no one else. That is, until the commander of this region hatches a plot to kidnap the prince. This commander personally defeats our shinobi, kidnaps our young master, and sets the events of the game into motion. But shadows die twice, or to quote the Japanese title, we will endure. We awaken in an abandoned temple. And if it's the same as the temple that's burning in the intro, then it may well belong to the Goddess of Mercy. Alongside us is Abushi, who is obsessively carving countless statues of the Buddha. These statues are typically created in the image of one who has obtained Buddhahood or enlightenment. So it's curious then that many of these statues appear to have two torsos and four arms, often with their left arm missing. And the Bushi and our character too are also missing their left arm, but ours has been replaced with a ningishu, a ninja prosthetic arm. So it's with this, says the Bushi, that we'll be better equipped to get back our honor and rescue our young master. And this is the man who took him. He's the commander of the Ashina clan. And thanks to the Japanese Sekiro website, we actually already know a ton about his history. So we don't know the commander's name, but his grandfather was called Ashina Ishin, and he was a Kensei, which literally translates to Sword Saint. Basically, it's somebody who has a legendary skill in swordsmanship. Uh, he was an inspiring figure, and in his time, he wrested control of this region and embedded the Ashina clan within it. The official site stresses that he did this in just one generation, and it labels him as a hero of the northern country. However, now, two generations later, with his grandchild in command, the Ashina clan is described as being in a life or death crisis. A hostile force is encroaching upon their territory and they seek to wipe out the entire clan. And fighting between clans was really common at this time. The game is set in feudal Japan, after all, and this was the age of warring states, the Sengoku period. So the Ashina clan of Sekiro, rising to power and then facing defeat less than two generations later, fits perfectly with the era. And here's the really interesting thing, the Ashina clan actually existed during this period, it's not even made up. So for the first time, we're gonna see some parallels with lore and history. So the Ashina clan in Japanese history was this clan that claimed its descent from another major Japanese clan of samurai called the Taira clan. And I can't find too much information on how the actual Ashina clan was run, but they eventually suffered two major defeats that led to the death of the clan. So the defeat of the Ashina clan is really well documented and it's worth talking about their defeat because it looks like the in-game Ashina clan is facing a very similar fate. According to the official website, the commander of the Ashina is terribly anxious and secretly informs his own troops that there's no ordinary or natural means of protecting the Ashina from the attacking army. We definitely need that prince now. That's interesting. The commander believes that our prince is their only hope of protection. So who is this prince and why is he so important? We know a lot about the prince, but we're gonna have to break it down. So the prince is a part of an ancient clan that precedes the Ashina in this region. However, around the time that the Ashina took control, this prince appears to have lost his clan and family and was raised instead by one of the Ashina clan's lesser subjects, the vassal Harata. Now, the Harata could be a lesser clan of the Ashina, but it could also be a person, as someone named Hirata Kiyonori was actually a general within the real-life Ashina clan around this time. After the prince was passed on and taken care of by Harata, it seems that we, a capable shinobi, were charged with the prince's protection instead. Uh, that is, until he was stolen from us by the commander of the Ashina who needs him back. So now we know who the prince is, but we still have to ask, why does the commander believe that having the prince will solve the problem of an oncoming army? Uh, well, the bushi in the trailer specifies that Your master still lives. They'll soon make use of his bloodline. 
The word bloodline is curious. So remember, we don't know the prince's specific origins, except that he's considered royalty of an ancient clan. So I think there's two ways that kidnapping the prince could protect the Ashina from an oncoming army. There's an ordinary reason, and there's an extraordinary reason. So the ordinary reason would be because the prince's family history might be important to the oncoming army. Now, after all, at the time of feudal Japan, you can kind of imagine that kidnapping someone might be a really good idea if you want to use them for political leverage. So when Bushi says they'll soon make use of his bloodline, they could simply be talking about the value of the prince's royal heritage. Or, and this is more interesting, they could be talking about the prince's bloodline in a far more extraordinary, literal sense. From Software has a really long history of bloody sacrifice in their games, and I wouldn't be surprised at all to see the commander invoking some sort of supernatural power with the prince's blood. Using the prince's bloodline, this does sound like it's a last resort, after all. And given there's a centipede fusion man seen in the trailer, no one should be too surprised, I think, to see Sekiro taking on a supernatural twist, just like Bloodborne did. And this brings us to the leaks about Sekiro, which mention quite a bit of stuff that's relevant. So a lot of the information here has already been validated, but please take the following with a grain of salt. So according to the leaks, the story of Sekiro is going to feature an ancient cult, fearful of the world's end. Uh, that sacrifices people at their shrine of blood as a way of forestalling the end of the world. A uh, central question is supposed to be whether the cult is really evil or whether they're just more well-informed than the rest of us. And almost as if to verify these leaks a little bit further, there actually was mention of a cult at E3, where journalists got to watch a more detailed gameplay demo. So during the demo, the player runs into an old lady, and then they kill her in cold blood. It was explained that she is a part of an evil cult, and if they didn't kill her, then she would have called for reinforcements. So, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see the commander of the Ashina giving into cultish sacrifice of the prince as a sort of last resort to save his clan. Until Gamescom rolls around in late August, that's probably going to be it from me for Sekiro content, but if we hear about anything else, please subscribe and you will see it on this channel. Uh, if you haven't seen them already, we have two videos that go in depth on the gameplay of Sekiro, so check those out. Special thanks to Loki for helping me translate literally everything the day the trailer released. Um, I didn't even get to mention this in the video, but there's a war banner in the trailer, and we translated it, and it says something along the lines of, there is no better combo than loyalty and bravery, and lay down your life for your country. I really hope that they have more stuff for us to translate in Sekiro, more environmental clues and words and stuff like that. Because if they're getting rid of a lot of items in Sekiro, I wonder how are they going to use item descriptions to tell the story? Hmm. A uh, message for patrons, I will be streaming again very soon, and to everyone, I'll see you next time.